Hello everyone and welcome to our first lesson on language development. Uh, this is just an introductory video um, to get you oriented to this unit. All right, so this is a linguistics class. Um, many of you have probably already taken a class in linguistics and have a pretty good idea of what it is, but just in case you haven't taken a class like that, um, we're going to do a little tour of what it means to be a linguist. So if you haven't heard, if you haven't taken a linguistics class, you might think of linguistics as um, making tables like this. So this is a, a declension chart for Latin, um, and it sort of sorts out a language uh, so that you can figure out, you know, how how the word looks in different contexts, right? Um, this is one of the things that linguists do: is they is they analyze and find patterns in language. You might also think of this, right? So this is a uh, a sort of a documentation task, right? So you go out into the world and you interview people about uh, how they say things in their language, right? This is another thing that some linguists would do. This is uh, me in Malawi a couple of years ago. Um, this is a movie about linguists, which maybe you saw called Arrival. Um, and in this movie, they uh, employ a linguist to come and decode the alien language that they're speaking. And so that's another skill that linguists will have is um, how to decode a language you've never heard before that, you know, you don't have a way to translate between it. How do you figure out what, what people are saying, right? So this is another thing that linguists do. But most strictly speaking, yeah. a linguist is, is a scientist who studies human language the same way a biologist might study the song of a particular species of bird. So to give you an idea of what this means, all right, so let's talk about how a biologist would go about studying the song of a particular bird. Um, this is a bird called the Northern Mockingbird, and I'm gonna play you a clip of what it sounds like. Um, and this is a bird that lives on the UVA campus. I'm sure you've heard it before, even if you didn't know you were hearing the Northern Mockingbird. Um, and I want you to think about what kinds of questions you as a biologist might ask about this bird and its song. All right, so what kind of questions might you ask? All right, you might ask, um, how does a mockingbird physically produce its song? Uh, and in order to do that, you might have to, you know, use some sort of medical imaging to look at the inside of a mockingbird as it sings. Um, you might have to do dissections of dead mockingbirds in order to figure that out, right? So that's that's one of the kinds of questions that you would ask. That's a physical question. How How is it physically possible? Um, but you might also be asking, what are mockingbirds communicating when they sing? Are they saying, are they defending territory? Are they um, just advertising themselves as a mate? Are they um, maybe saying something more complicated, right? Maybe they're communicating some sort of like languagey message, right, where they're having conversations with each other. Um, if they are encoding a deeper message, um, how do they encode that message? Um, do mockingbirds make other songs besides singing? That's another thing you might ask, right? So are there other songs? Do they, do they go ah, 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 at you or something like that, which they do do, right? Um, and what might those mean, right? That's another kind of question you could ask. You could ask, um, do mockingbirds uh, sing differently depending on where they live, right? Do they have languages or dialects of mockingbirdies, right? Um, do mockingbirds uh, sing differently based on their age or sex, right? Is it something that varies between um, groups of, of, of birds? Um, are there features that all mockingbird songs share, right? So this might be really interesting to study. Um, you know, you want to know what does a mockingbird song sound like? Um, and then you could ask questions about their learning. So how old does a mockingbird have to be to start singing? Do they sing uh, while well, they're still, you know, in the nest or do they have to be a uh, breeding age or maybe they don't start singing until they're three years old or something like that right so that's an interesting question you can ask um do mockingbirds know how to sing instinctively or do they have to to learn how to do that right so um uh and if so who teaches them um and what do they learn first what do they learn last so these are the these are the questions about um the development of mockingbird song as it turns out you can ask almost exactly the same questions about human language. So imagine that you are an alien biologist and you land on Earth and you notice that humans make all these different kinds of sounds, right? You might ask, how does a human physically produce the sounds of language, right? And for that, you would wanna do imaging and maybe dissections if you were a very bad alien. 
Um, what what are humans communicating when they speak? Right. You, as an alien might think, oh, they're just defending territory. Right. But you have to ask that and you have to ask, how is that message encoded? Right. Um, do humans make other sounds besides speech? For example, laughter. Right. What does laughter communicate for humans? Um, do humans speak differently based on where they live? Um, this is a this is a question of dialectology or even, you know, looking at multiple languages. Right. So this this is. Um, you know, are there differences depending on geography? Um, do humans speak differently depending on their age or sex? Um, this is the type of question that a uh, sociolinguist might ask. Uh, are there features that all human languages share? Um, this is a major question in uh, linguistics because it sort of determines what language even is, right? So this is a big question of under debate um, uh, in linguistics. Um, now, this is a class on language development. And so we're talking more about these kinds of questions. Uh, how old does a human have to be to start talking? Um, do humans know how to speak instinctively or do they have to learn? Now, clearly there is some learning involved, right? Because not everybody speaks the same language. But to what extent is that, you know, what do we have to learn um, in order to learn a language? Is it just the words of your own language or is it something more complicated than that? Um, who teaches you, right? How is it that you go about doing the learning? Right. Does somebody have to teach you all of your declensions um, or do you just pick those up as you're learning your first language? Um, uh, what did what do humans learn first? What do they learn last? This is also something that we're going to talk about in this class. So these are the questions that we're focusing on in a language development class. All right. So we're going to go back to our metaphor of, of the mockingbird. These are the same questions that we were just looking at as being language development questions applied to the mockingbird song again. Right. So if you are a biologist and you want to answer these questions, these are questions that are really hard to learn to, to answer um, if you don't have full context for what a mockingbird song looks like when it's a grown up. Right. Um, so before you have you can answer how does a mockingbird learn its song, you have to be able to answer what are they learning. Right. Um, uh, and so in the next couple of slides, we're going to go through how a biologist and would would assess, you know, what is the stuff that you have to learn in order to be qualified as a singing mockingbird, right? Um, and this is the same process that we're going to go through as linguists when we look at language to decide what do you have to be able to do to qualify as a as a, a language using human, right? Um, so let's see how we do that. All right, so here is a mockingbird song. Um, we're going to imagine that we're 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 trying to figure out. This, the, the, the song development of mockingbirds. Um, and the first step in that is figuring out what is the song that they are um, developing. And so this is the sound of a mockingbird um, from Maryland. And mockingbirds are a type of bird called mimids, which means that they imitate sounds that they hear around them, which is a lot like humans, right? So humans learn a language based on what's around them, right? Mockingbirds imitate the songs of other birds that they hear around them. Um, so let's listen through the sound uh, song of a mockingbird from Maryland, and I'm going to point out when it's mimicking another bird's uh, call. Right there, it's imitating a blue jay. And this is a different kind of blue jay call. Right, so there's two different blue jays. I think that's maybe a seagull. We've got a Carolina wren. We've got a northern cardinal. She's going crazy. That's a peewee. Um, and this is certainly a Phoebe. I don't even know what that one is. That could just be a wolf whistle that it's picked up. Um, uh, so you can see that it has assembled a song from a bunch of pieces, right? So that now we know something about uh, mockingbird songs, right? So they're built out of pieces of, of other um, bird songs. And if you so the fact that they imitate the sounds of um, birds around them means that when you go to a different part of the country where there are different birds singing, um, mockingbird so songs are going to sound different. So this is the song of a mockingbird from California, and you'll notice that it's going to imitate different songs, right? The first thing is some sort of finch, not really sure. And then we've got a common poor will. I don't know what that one is. I don't know my Western birds as well. We're going to have a Western scrub jay right here. 
And then we have a card called Brasher, which is one that also lives in Arizona, in case you're interested. So um, these are the, this is what the sound of a mockingbird from California sounds like, right? So not only are they sort of picking and choosing songs and mixing them up every time, right? They have a sort of a whole inventory and they just do other birds' songs, but they're only going to do the songs that they've heard, right? So they don't just imitate, they don't just come with a dictionary of songs that they can do, right? These are songs that they've heard around them as they grow up. Let's look at these two songs next to each other. What do they have in common? First of all, they're both imitating the sounds that they hear around them, right? If you've got a mockingbird that is not imitating sounds that are heard around it, it's not doing its mockingbird job right, right? It hasn't properly learned its mockingbird song. Um, but also, if you look at these songs, each of them have these sort of series of repetitions. And in each of them, they repeat each song that they're borrowing at least like three times. There's a couple instances where this one's only doing two, um, but, but mostly they repeat their songs like three or more times. And this makes mockingbirds different from other um, mimid birds, other birds that imitate bird songs. Um, so for instance, you've got thrashers, which is another group of, of mimid birds, and they usually only repeat everything two times. Um, and then you've got catbirds that only do each imitation once. So they don't repeat it at all. They just do it one, each song once. Um, and so this is how you can tell that this has learned to be a mockingbird, right? So it's repeating sounds. It's repeating the right kinds of sounds. It's repeating them the right number of times, right? This is the characteristics of mockingbird songs. So when we ask what features do all mocking, adult mockingbird songs share, um, they take sounds from what they hear around them and improvise songs. Um, they choose songs that are repetitive, so they don't imitate everything. They're not going to imitate barking dogs, for example, or human speech. Um, um, and they look for stuff with a specific rhythmic pattern and specific pitch range. Um, and mockingbirds repeat most pieces of their song three or more times, right? And so now that we have this description, we can ask, how do they learn this stuff, right? We can ask about the development of that. Um, so if we're trying to answer the question, how do humans learn language? we really first have to ask the question, what features do adult human languages share? So that we can figure out what is a language, right? What does it mean to have learned one, right? Um, and that's what we're gonna talk about in the next couple of lessons. Um, we're gonna talk about what is a language? How do we think about having learned a language? Um, what does an, you know, an, a normal adult's language development end state look like? Um, so that's the next lesson. Thanks.